I'm allowing this one, even though it's kind of dumb. Er, well, not kind of dumb. It is dumb because this is the guy that introduced me to both of you guys. So kind of feel like I owe him this one. Uh, he, his name's Taylor Nelson. He wants to know if you guys have a favorite Care Bear. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't ask. I mean, I'm just reading the question, man. Good. All right, Don, shall we? We shall. <laughs> the history. I'm gonna drink some Pepsi, bro. My dog. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for this. I'm here today with Don Campham and Lord fucking Marco of Waking the Cadaver. It's awesome to be able to sit here and talk with you guys, and I want to thank you again for the thousandth time for coming to join me for this. No problem, man. Thanks for having us. This is sick as fuck, man. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Um, okay, so <clears throat> how I do most of my interviews is I kind of do uh, some just kind of get-to-know-you kind of questions, and then we kind of get more into your career a little bit along the way. So um, we'll just start from the very beginning. Uh, when did you guys start playing music, and what made you want to start? I'm like, all right, I'll I'll go. It's this is uh, I mean, let's see. I I wanted to play music um pretty much ever since I was a little kid, as far as I can remember. When I was like four years old, I remember I really wanted to play the violin for some reason, even though um you know we like my family wasn't really musical or anything and we were listening to like michael jackson and shit like that you know so it was strange i always found it strange that i wanted to play the violin back then uh and my parents were just like they're like no you, you don't want to play the violin and then like fucking a few years later you know a few years pass and my friend in elementary school you know we're in third grade he plays a guitar you know and he and we're listening to like green day and offspring and stuff and he's just like, Hell yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, you should play the drums. And and out of nowhere, you know, literally, I was like, all right, I'll just play the drums. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, you know, this is like back in the you know mid '90s. And so, yeah, that's just literally how it started. It was like out of fucking out of the blue. Like I knew I had this like urge, you know, to play music and to create and just do art and stuff. But um, yeah, literally, it was just because my friend was like, hey, let's start a band. And you know, we were like nine years old, and and there we were trying to uh, sound like Green Day and shit like that. <laughs> I mean, if you didn't try to sound like Green Day at some point, uh, your yeah, your right. childhood was boring. I mean, <laughs> I I had the bass anthology book like as a kid when I was first learning. I had a book teach me how to play like eleven other songs. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh. It's it's crazy. They're still a band and the same the same members the whole time. That's that's yeah. impressive as hell. So. <laughs> yep. Don, what about you, sir? Well, let's see. I started music early in life, about uh, fourth grade, actually, uh, playing saxophone. And uh, started reading music early, early. And then uh, I think that really sparked my interest because I was uh, learning a lot, you know, at, at a really young age. I don't know what age you are at fourth grade, but you're not that young but you're not that old so i'd say um to pick up something like the saxophone was pretty advanced uh it's a very advanced instrument but i think from that point forward um my music direction was always uh uh wide you know it was it was it was a a wide variety of music my parents listened to a lot of different music uh, i had an older sister that uh like five or six years older and um she so I, I always had like the music that I probably shouldn't have been listening to at certain ages getting trickled down, you know. Um I'm sure a lot right. of us have kind of had stuff like that with friends or stuff. <clears throat> so that was a lot of fun, uh like getting hints of music before my time. And then um fast forward all the way to current not current day, but when I first started uh heavy metal stuff, um my friend in High school, Andy Fair, he uh, was like um, a guitar prodigy. I don't even think he realizes how good he is. Maybe to this day, um, this guy could play Dream Theater, John Petrucci, like it was nothing. 
and I would wow. like that's, that's some serious stuff. He had like really short fingers, you know, really shred, really good. I like perfect guitar hands, you know. I have these big clunky hands. I was like, I could play the bass, dude, but I can't get my hands in there. I can't do it. So we would always jam, and he'd be teaching me some stuff on guitar and bass, and we'd be having a good time, and he would just be shredding, and I'd be listening to all sorts of stuff I didn't I, I didn't know existed. Queensryche, Dream Theater, all this progressive metal. Um, uh, earlier days in early high school, I had a couple of friends that had older brothers and sisters, and they would, you know, I, I would hear Pantera for the first time. You know, that would probably be the first heaviest band I've ever heard in my life would be fucking Hostile by, by Pantera on, on tape. And uh, you don't have to listen to it in secret because there was cursing and stuff like this. And uh, but yeah, just like getting introduced to things uh, from a wide variety of people throughout my life and different aspects of um, music and music interests. And um, and then actually one day with my friend Andy, I was uh, messing around with my voice because I would always basically do imitations and stuff like this with my voice and kind of a charismatic person and you know i don't know i kind of would always imitate movies and be a real character when i was younger and um i kind of brought that to uh you know when you're kind of a, a creative person which i am uh in, in, in many many facets there are uh different things that you venture out into and uh playing with your voice is uh something that <clears throat> i have been doing for a while because it's very deep and uh, I could do a lot of things with it. And I used to make a lot of noises just to see what kind of noises you can make. And, you know, I was thinking about character development, uh, early stages of getting into my career of uh, uh, graphic arts and com computer arts and stuff like this. Um, but in this realm of being creative, you know, to, 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 to wrap it up, is uh, I was just making noises one day while he was shredding. And he looks at me like, whoa, like blown away. He's like, and I'm just doing gutturals. I'm just ripping these gutturals like it's nothing, just doing them like it's whistling, you know? And he just <laughs> looks at me and he's like, oh my God, can you do that at any time? I said, yeah, I could just, I've always been able to make this noise. I said, this is not really a big deal. And uh, he was really blown away on how cool it sounded. And I was, this is before I probably even knew anything about death metal. I mean, I knew Cannibal Corpse and, you know, shit like this, you know, like your, your, your core stuff, but I didn't know devourment, you know, I didn't know anything that was, you know, guttural secrete, you know, I didn't know any of the, 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 the ill shits, but, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I know that's a long answer, but, uh, it, it, it that's stems okay. from. It stems from, you know, early age, you know, uh, much like Marco, you know, it's really early and, um, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, that I'm very beneficial that, that I was able to, to get my hands on such instrument, you know, at the time and, uh, be able to be taught through school, you know, and get, get that under my belt. And, uh, and up until this day, I think it's, uh, shaped me <clears throat> for who I am and, uh, has pointed me in a lot of directions in life. Um, and I think everybody, uh, should learn an instrument or, um, try something new with, with, uh, their talents or something like this in, in the creative realm, because you just simply don't know what you're going to, what, what barriers you're going to break down and what's going to come about just by having fun or, you know, jamming with your friend, you know, do you know just innocently you know there's nothing no agenda to start a band or you know no concept of even how to do such things you know <clears throat> it wasn't even a realm that we could dabble in there wasn't really many people we knew to go even think of something like that so it was always just hanging out having a good time uh i would be you know pre-internet you know basically where people would you know we would just be finding things out still old school so you know my my generation is you know that that crossover generation where it was old school and uh you, you either were in the know or you know you weren't so um, right yeah as far as like you guys this early work and everything brain gel brain drill and waking the cadaver what bands would you say inspired that sound that you guys initially were going for marco you can start first yeah <laughs> i know i mean i, I would definitely say Brain drill, waking the cadaver are definitely kind of uh, different, 
you know, uh, styles of, I guess, extreme music. For, right. for brain for brain drill, it was like we we were just trying to be literally just fast. <laughs> like basically, basically, you know, me and the guitarist Dylan, we were both really into like Origin and, and Nile and stuff like that. And and we were basically just like, what if we took the most extreme parts of those bands, you know, like Origin just doing the sweet picking and gravity blasting, like and we were like, what if we just did that all the time? <laughs> <laughs> so and i mean back then you know it's like this was like in 2005 2006 and it was like nobody nobody then was really you know basically nobody was doing that like it was almost like you know everyone was, it was like uncalled for you know what i mean but we were like no we're gonna do it we're gonna take it to the next level of just like you know ridiculously fast music and and just be really extreme about it you know um so yeah, I mean, really, really like you know, for us, you know, Origin was a big influence, because because I mean, you know, then there wasn't really too many. I mean, there was like you know, Brodequin or, or stuff like that. Even just like Last Days of Humanity and stuff like that was just like straight up grindcore, though, you know. But um, we were we were we were more like death metal, but uh, just just speed, you know, pure speeds, you know. So <laughs> right, that was, that was definitely our thing. And uh, basically, it was like for me for the drumming, it's like. I, you know, Dylan was showing me a riff and like he showed me the songs and stuff and, and I wrote the drums for them. And I just, I basically told him, I was like, dude, I was like, dude, are you cool with me literally matching the snare drum to like, like to the, to the strum, you know, like to the picking, the guitar picking. So it's like whenever he did tremolo and stuff, I would just do gravity blast. And then anytime he's just like chugging, I would just follow it with the snare. And, and that was literally like the whole like formula for brain drill. Cause yeah, I just, I was, I, I, that was like the music I wanted to hear, you know, like, like right. I, I always, I always like basically play stuff that I want to hear, you know? So it's like, cause right. I'm just like, no, no one's just doing straight up blasted for four minutes, you know, like straight, you know what I mean? So I was like, do you just want it to be over the top, like ridiculous for sure. <laughs> right. And, yeah. I'm like, for me, it was just more fun to play fast too, especially back then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the uh, sound for waking was uh, basically the same kind of concept as playing what we wanted to hear um, and what we were influenced by, which was a lot of things. Um, early, early waking lineup or um, different mindset of the people who are playing now with different um, skill set for sure at a totally different age and a totally different era that we're trying to be something else and then um i would i would say you know we, we really loved hate breed we loved hardcore we loved beat down we love uh brutal death metal we love grind core i mean we loved it all there's there's nothing um in 2000 early 2000s that we weren't into if it was heavy we were into it you know um um I would say that we were really into pushing envelopes. That was kind of the thing is how far can we push this? Like at and thinking back now is like <clears throat> you have a bunch of 16 year olds and them really having to tap into a, you, know, you know like their their most brutal world that they could think of at that time. And what they were influenced by, which was dying fetus and, and guttural secrete and stuff like this. And we had our hands finally on the heavy, 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 heavy stuff, you know, like when you thought it was, you know, <clears throat> Cannibal Corpse was the heaviest, you know, you got put in check by some of these other bands that we were listening to. And we were like, whoa, this is, this is really heavy. And I don't think it gets really any heavier than this. So we want to be like that combined with this and then make it our own by putting in this like little jersey flavor and then uh the drummer at the time he uh was really good at marketing in my opinion and was really good with uh coming up with a lot of catchy things and came up with the phrase uh slamming gore groove for you know going into detail about the the little niche sound that we were going for within the slam community which was very minimal at the time <clears throat> um so i think uh it kind of developed into this uh this little crunk 
funk flavor where we could kind of bounce around in inside the songs and it had breakdowns but they were they were brutal death metal at the same time so i mean we were happy with it we were we were really in our in our world like this is the heaviest we got you know that this is it you know chase through the woods by a rapist you know that that song title alone and the and, and all the song titles for this first album and all the lyrics uh, uh i think aside from blood splattered are written by uh the drummer and bass player at the time uh steven dennis so they were really thinking um how are we going to beat you know cannibal corpse type stuff you know that that's pretty tough that they got it kind of the market cornered here with masturbate with the severed head you know and uh you know I yeah. come blood. So i'm like I, I don't know you guys are gonna beat that i don't know man i don't i don't think so and then they wrote all these lyrics one night and i was like all right maybe you guys come really close and then they really started pushing the envelopes with some real you know touchy words to really really get people to be like oh man you're saying that you know and really really doing these things to kind of make your skin crawl again pushing the envelope in a in a in a, in a fucked up way and it, but in right. a in a fucked up in a fucked up creative way much like people push horror movies in a fucked up creative way so people so we were kind of getting some shit like that but then i would always combat that with that answer uh i would say well what are you going to do you're going to run up to the next director and yell in his face that he made a killer horror movie better than the next no you're out there paying for it top dollar so right you know get off my back you know get these guys some fucking credit you know you're not you're not you're not yelling at these other bands you know uh, we were taking some real real grenades early on you know as as everybody knows from doing uh research about the band <clears throat> or uh being a part of it uh, uh as as watching this band go from uh well, nobody knows who you are to to hitting a right place at the right time with a with a different sound that's really really racy and really different and really uh, uh cringy and really like uh that's just like something you want to turn off and basically that's really also what we wanted to create in a, in a way is really aggravate people you know really really get you to that point where you're get you're either going to love this because it's so extreme or you really just want to get the fuck away from it and it's really annoying and you can't stand me because you don't like the, you don't like anything i'm doing which is also part of my point, right? Like that's that's the extreme of it, and that's something I was really going for. Um, so, in the level of how do I? So, you, so you have the lyrics, right? But I'm not saying any of these lyrics. It's just simply noise. So, using using noise and leveraging this creative aspect of how extreme can we just be noisy and a bunch of noisemakers with breakdowns, <laughs> you know. That to us, that was about as extreme as you can get. So, um, you know, that that's really what shaped the band. Uh, uh, to answer the question, is um, you know, trying to find our own way, but by pushing the envelope, not really, <clears throat> not really following uh, a recipe like somebody else is doing, which is kind of what kids do these days when they're inventing bands. They they want to be like whatever that guy's doing, which I really feel is wrong. I really feel like you're not going to, how could you set yourself apart when you're just trying to be like the other guy? So we didn't do that. I, I really was like, well, I'm going to go do it like this. You know, I so he, you know, he's doing it like that. They're doing it like this. I'm going to do it like this and then add this and this and that. But I'm going to just do it my way, you know, and if, and then I got a lot of shit for it. I really don't care. You know, I wasn't focused on that as much as uh, that was flowing in. There was a lot of love flowing in. We were getting a lot of offers early on as soon as we came out. Uh, the popularity was growing very quickly on MySpace. At the, again, at the right place at the right time with a different sound that was that was just so extreme. You had to you had to be a part of it. And um, we were getting offers to just get flown out to California. We we're like, oh, my God, this is out of control. You know, like we didn't really think anybody was really going to like this. The, the whole point was basically for nobody to really like this and people really, 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 really liking it. So it made us feel really good. And um, I think that's what kind of pushed us to always keep on going. You know, the, the, the lineup has changed several, several, several times. 
and um, that has also shaped the albums <clears throat> to be sounding completely not completely different but uh de definitely different and you have different members again with different members creating different things and uh you're gonna get a different product every time you know so it would be really sick to uh, finally with marco to um, produce another album with marco in mind because <laughs> mind you the latest album to jump out of that question into some updated material um uh the album was not written with marco in mind so mike mayo was writing his ass off for us um with a different lineup in mind as well with a different skill set in mind so when that lineup has changed we brought marco in marco busted his ass on this to to get it done in record-breaking time too we were all uh, kind of under the gun with uh, the covid nonsense and where that put everybody in a timetable and and where we couldn't get things done we we, we wound up losing a band member at the time too during the, the writing process so we didn't know what was going to go on you know thing, things were really messed up for a while and um there was no band practice there was no band really it was just just like really up in the air so um we really just wanted to put this album out but again it's going to be um really something in my opinion to do it on, again with marco but with marco in mind with the writing it's going to be uh extreme right you know i really want to make sure that you know we're we're, we're we have these uh, songs to listen back to that Mike's writing, and they're really incredible. And um, definitely want to go go back and tweak, which is the fun part right now, and make sure everything is so at that extra, again push the envelope in in all these directions, and make sure with Marco in mind that everything is super super insane. Yeah. You know. But yeah. Hell really yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. Next Hell question. Yeah. All right, so you guys touched on this a little bit while you were answering my previous question, but how, I mean, first of all, what was it like coming up in the extreme metal world when it really wasn't as well-known and as many people were listening to it and as accepted, at, accepting as it is now? I mean, how was it hard for you guys to get shows and, like, to find places to play? Uh, I mean, I've, as you said, you kind of went out there with like we want to be as fast aggressive and heavy as possible um so what was what was the response to that that you guys received the response was incredible to be honest um we had like sold out shows in, when we were flown out to california um big pay the payday was huge i was like whoa very impressed you know um getting treated a certain way it was was wild i didn't i didn't some wild stuff happened um we had this one really big show in california that uh, we were about to play and it got uh it got uh tear gassed some by like two tear gas grenades that got thrown into the venue and like crushed everybody <laughs> unfortunately wow. uh, yeah it was it was horrible uh in in, in southern california area and uh, i guess there was some hater or something like that that didn't want the show to go on and that's the length that they went to so uh but that was probably the only thing we dealt with that was a bit negative uh put a fine point on it other than in 2019 getting getting extorted in indonesia but that's a whole other topic <laughs> uh but yeah, back in the day, we we had a good response. Uh, everybody was really yeah. into getting their hands on the you know the next level extreme bands that were that were coming out. Um, so yeah, I mean it was good. I'm sure you know Marco had a good experience as well. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's definitely very similar to that. I mean, especially with Brain Drill. I mean, it's like I I almost feel like it was uh, kind of easier actually to just like put on a show and and you like it was kind of like no matter what you know like no matter what was happening it was like they were always packed like 
a lot of, a lot of you know all the, all the teens and shit were coming out and it's like i just remember like brain drill like our first show was like with decrepit birth and like our second show was literally with like job for a cowboy and all shall perish wow. and then yeah it's like it, it was like every single show like literally the first four shows we played were with all big bands our, our fourth show was with necrophagist and cannibal corpse and, oh shit and it, was, and it was like i don't know i felt like it was just like so easy like you know, during the MySpace era, you know, because it was like, we're just on MySpace and, you know, and we see like, you know, basically it was like, we would see like what tour was coming by us or something. And like, I would literally just write to them, the band, you know, or like, or like find, basically find out who, who was putting on the show and just be like, hey, can, can Brain Drill open it or something? And it was, it was just like done like that, like so easy. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was, it was definitely way, I feel like it was definitely a way different uh, era, you know, different time. I, I mean, I think, I think now though, it's just interesting though because it's like like metal now is just definitely a lot bigger i would say than it was you know back then but also at the same time it's almost like i i don't know i just feel like i feel like more people were just really coming out to all the shows and supporting it like you know like they just didn't give a fuck you know it was like everyone just went to the show no matter what you know <laughs> right so. well you also have to think back then any footage that would have been uploaded to youtube or anything after that would have looked like it was recorded on a potato so I know. <laughs> you know there was there was consequences to missing shows like serious I mean, consequences yeah. actually yeah yeah, yeah. That, that is actually yeah man that's a good point that's true because i know yeah back then it was like nobody was live streaming shows or anything either no. so it was like yeah it was kind of like yeah you had to you had been there you know to see it to believe it and shit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh awesome now uh well side note don the the tear gassing incident did that happen like before the show or during uh, that happened during, right before we were about to play, so we didn't even get a chance to play. We actually got paid. The money went into my hand, and then I hear a bunch of people crying and screaming, and, like, people were just, like, vomiting and bleeding from the mouth. And I was like, oh, my God, what the... I didn't get hit with it. I went backstage, like, <laughs> ready, to, like ready to fucking do my thing. And I felt bad, It was, and it was it was freezing cold. It was the most... Well, now we're in Southern California, and and all we had at the time, like even getting merch done back in the day, was like a big deal. You know, we we didn't we didn't have a lot of money to be honest with you. Uh, we weren't like a rich kid band or something like this. So to get things done took a lot of effort to get the funds. So we we did have a stock of merchandise for this tour, but we we only had hoodies, and like a ton of them and we shipped them out to a friend of ours uh rena who um took care of us out there and drove us around and uh, gutter christ came out with us and he can witness you know he was he he can say that he witnessed everything because uh he got hit with the tear gas and oh uh, he was the one that was selling the hoodies as it was snowing for the first time in Southern California, where it should be hot. So it was pretty funny how the universe paid that in full, as I look at that in hindsight, as we only had hoodies to sell and we were banging them out at 40 bucks a pop to kids that were freezing from these little flurries that they never seen before. And they were just freezing and they didn't, the only thing that we had was a hoodie and we sold out of everything. And so we, we made a lot of money. And, it was it was good it's supply and demand sir yeah, it was it was funny though because we were in southern california and i was like this is they're like yeah this is this should be hot <laughs> like well it's not it's snowing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was that was pretty funny you guys kind of touched on this a little bit earlier when you're talking about the initial reaction that people had when you guys kind of came out but uh I mean, Waking the Cadaver especially has had some really brutal critics over the years. Like, I knew that before this, but, like, I started doing research and stuff when I was getting ready for this, and, like, holy shit, people were fucking mean. Um, and I bring that up, I bring that up to say, like, you know, in the day and age we are now, where everyone's always trying to call each other out on social media for every little thing, um, I, I personally feel like a lot of the... Uh, newer musicians coming out don't have the thick skin that some of the musicians before had. Like, I feel like things kind of get under their skin, if not more just more visibly now. Um, 
how how did you how did you guys deal with that kind of adversity when you guys were coming up and even now i mean i know people still talk all kinds of shit so um how do you guys deal, or how did you deal with that adversity when you were first kind of getting used to dealing with that on a regular basis okay so you have a bunch of younger guys right putting their heart and soul out there right then it gets crushed by a bunch of people who are not doing shit with their life and are aggravated that somebody's doing something with theirs. That's all it really comes down to. And people want to shit on other people's creativity because they're not doing anything creative with their life. And that's all it comes down to. doesn't matter what it is. It has nothing to do with the sound. It just has to do with people that are in a negative zone and want to bring people down to their level. Now, when you got a bunch of kids at 16, 17, 18 tops, you know, I'm just graduating college at that point. I'm always the older guy. Um, 2006, yeah, I'm, I'm out of Monmouth University at this point, and I'm now looking for to start my career. And these kids are about, you know, five, six years younger, seven years younger, um, shit like this. So the, the age group is, is vastly different. The mental state is different. The sensitivity is different. Um, we have had early day internet hatred get to a couple of us, uh, really bad because of, uh, the level of how much you would absorb and take in you would have these forums that would be out there that um i'll just say band members back in the day not myself uh or band member would be popping off in there uh you know talking shit back to other people now you have problems with people it's a very very small little scene um there was a couple of big forums back in the, in the day um that a couple of the clicky people would be hanging on you know running their mouth on kind of controlling the scene if you will you know um or as much as they thought they could you know just by leveraging their internet weight you know in the small world and getting people to get aggravated at other people to make their band you know the 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 bigger band or what have you, you know, and then that was early days of running the mouth type shit. Um, so I don't know. There was, there was a lot of that. It was a lot of, because of my space and because of this bringing everybody one degree closer to each other and everybody, you know, it was beyond AOL, you know, it was, it's, it, it's, it's more personal. It's now you have this, dialed in profile people know you've really exposed yourself this is who i am this is who we are this is the band here's our albums here's free shit here's pictures here's animated gifts here's code to copy and paste <laughs> you know you're just you're, you're you're doing all this self diy you're putting yourself out there and then when people come around and shit on all that um, it doesn't really make any sense. The only thing you can really take away from that is that they're miserable and uh, they're jealous, <clears throat> or they just, you know, have, you know, that that vibe where they want to go be noticed for the hatred, or uh, or maybe people just don't understand. I mean, you have back in the day, we we you, so you, okay, so let's bring it down to the to 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 the real shit. Is you know, millions of views on the shredded wheat video. Now you have this brie, 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 right? Now when this hit, this word hit the scene, right? I was like, "What the fuck is everybody talking about?" I had no clue what anybody's talking about, because I'm coming from like the word gutturals, right? I'm, I'm in the death metal world. There was a term for this, right? Gutturals. This was a thing where this is like the term. And then you have the demographic of people who never heard this before because of waking the cadaver because of leveraging this new platform myspace okay now you're exposing yourself to people who have no clue who you are and they don't get it they have to make up this term off based on the sound you know of what they hear they don't know the term they don't know to call it gutturals so they make up their world their own words 
then because there are no fucking words, they just decide, well, all right, let me have fun with this. And some kid, not a hater, couldn't possibly be a hater. One of the biggest fans on the planet goes out of his way back in the day, you know, early editing, and edits this enormous video about shredded wheat and, and cheese and, and cereal. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, and everybody's just like, are these the words? And I was like, no, but who the fuck am I to say otherwise? That's what it sounds like I'm saying. <laughs> you know? You know? Oh, no big I deal, remember you know? I remember seeing that shit as a teenager. I'm fucking yeah. dying laughing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, the- I, people thought I was taking uh, taking that to heart. I said, no, I, I instantly knew. I was like, this is obviously just what people want to make of it right now. And really, there's no such thing as bad exposure, right? You just, you know, there's just no, no such thing as bad publicity. So we were getting publicity, even if it was people getting jealous. It was just saying pass the business card along for me thanks a lot guy who doesn't like me so you win anyway (laughs) it doesn't matter we were winning anyway the more somebody doesn't like you the more they're talking about you and the more you're they're doing your bidding for you so go ahead there's no such thing as a hater the person just doesn't understand i recently have had somebody come clean on and i had to post it up on 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 youtube comments this person proudly says that they shit talked early days and they are eating their words today because they now understand they have grown up. They <laughs> understand. They, they got it. It takes a minute to get this shit. You don't just get this shit. You don't just walk into the land of gutturals and like, Oh, you could eat buffet. You know, I can't wait to listen to this shit all fucking day. Like, it doesn't work that way. You need to work your way into this. You step your way in. But yeah, death metal is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, people want it. It's more and more mainstream. So, you know, now Waking the Cadaver is almost a, a fucking household name at some point. I've been recognized in certain parts of the world where I don't even think people uh, like mind boggling. People have even recognized me in Berlin, Germany, walking with. Uh, 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 my girl at the time and I had a mask on and she goes did you see the way that person just looked at you they knew who you were you know like it's it's wild you know uh, but yeah man it's 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 been a wild trip I, I, I can't I can't deny that there's been a lot of a lot of ups and downs with the band there's been a lot of uh, lineup changes there's been um, a lot of positive a lot of negative but there's there's always been us um, taking not the hard road, but the uh, the non non sellout road, if you will. And I I put that very lightly because we've had big contracts from big people, from some big labels early on. I mean, like contracts thick contracts where it says some wild shit for 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 nothing in return (laughs) you know so so we we did not i mean things that would be like hey i'm on this label look at us now you know this kind of shit like holy shit waking signed to this label so fucking quick well guess what waking didn't do that we didn't do that because i didn't want to do it everybody else would have done that and made a very big mistake in their life just to have some bragging rights, you know, and then paid in full, you know, karma come full, full swing. When, when, once we did the right thing, we, we wound up getting, uh, uh, great offers that didn't need to leverage any, anything, but ourselves, you know, we didn't need a big record label. We, even so, even if we had this label in, in negotiation was, uh, we're not going to do anything for you for tour. What are you talking about? What tour? Tour what? Talking music deal. That's it. I was like, we mean that's it. Don't give me that shit. So it was a lot of nonsense, a lot, a lot of bullshit. I'm looking to do business with people and shake hands with people on many levels. And I have done that. And I know who is a bullshit artist and who isn't. And um, you, you learn a lot by by networking and i've been all over this planet several times networking and people who know me um 
uh, know I'm a good person to do networking with and to, to grow with. And um, yeah, you know, that's that's what it comes down to, too, is um, throughout the years, you you. You're you're you don't realize when 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 the time is going so fast and I look back how many years have passed, how much I've done, you know, how much you. It's it's nuts. I, I sometimes I, I, I don't even, I don't even understand it. You know, um, you're kind of on this autopilot and shit. I don't know. It's just it's wild to think about how much you've you've paved the way. Um, I have people, these kids coming up to me. I mean, to switch it into the positive from from how people were were treating the band. Now it's like on some other level shit, some legendary shit. It's some people are coming up to me like for a while now, uh, just going nuts and thanking me. Thank you for for doing your music. It's changed me or put me on a path or because I heard you do this. I knew I could do that. And thank you for the confidence or something like this of that nature and uh, really send me a lot of love and the band a lot of love. And this is just, you know, wild, you know, to go tour around the world with this brutal, disgusting death metal with my friends. This is wild concept. This is a very humbling experience. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's to know there's a whole fucking community out there with tattoos on their bodies, on their faces with my band's logo. I mean, this is a fucking wild thing. This is nuts. Um, the, the the band is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It, I think it's bigger than the people in the band. There's only four of us, <laughs> you know. The, it's it's that waking the cadaver is getting to be very very big. It's get it's been around for a while, and the 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 the, the sound is growing, and it's extremely mature, and it's going to get even bigger and bigger with Marco and the way Mike's writing, <clears throat> the way my vocals have been growing, and uh, the. Uh, just everything. It's all. It's all going to come together. You know, I'm. I'm excited for for the. the you know, the, the future. This journey has been, you know, a wild ride. You know, to to wrap up this question, it's been, it's been, early days, real positive, and then because it shot up so fast in the positive zone, it got a lot of hate, and then because of that hate, we changed the way we we sounded, to get back on it. It was. Everybody was hurt a little bit, and the gutturals were getting so much negativity that we literally like took them out in the Beyond Cops, Beyond God album, and then people were pissed about that. And then that rating, that album on Candlelight Records at the time, got zero out of ten reviews and stuff like this, and really got really got the garbage treatment. But now everybody loves that album and realizes that's the shit, and that's totally different. And now, don't you want to? Don't you see that that has evolved into the next album? And real life death was something that people went gaga for, and we were really proud about. And that was really shaping our sound. And the lineup was getting, you know, a little uh, more fierce. And uh, the writing was getting, you know, extra serious and and really scrutinized in in the uh, writing process on what's gonna make the cut. What's 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 extreme here, and uh, how are we going to deliver this to be the most extreme? And then time has passed, and now we come back together, and we're able to put out this next extreme. But now we're going to put out another extreme, you know, with with Marco in mind. So just keep setting the bar for for ourselves, you know. Right. All right, Marco, do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have too much to add because um, it is true what Don's saying, like where where it's like even if someone's talking shit, they're still talking about you. So it's like you know you or your band or whatever. So it's like that's still publicity or whatever. You know, what I mean, it's like they're still they're you know it's like they're they're, they're basically it's like free advertisement, but. Uh, I like kind of like kind of kind of different is what I've noticed like in the drumming world and stuff. Um, I feel like in the past people were really hard on it. Like like drummers were just like super hard on each other, man. You know, it was like oh this guy's blasted all like like a pussy or something, and you know oh this guy hits you know soft and stuff like that. I feel like I feel like nowadays it's a uh, way different. Like everyone's way more supportive now, and then that's where it's like that's where that's where like now people are judging other people. 
you know, not on like their band or not on their, you know, on their plane. They're they're like judging them, you know, on like who who they're voting for or like you know just like politics and stuff. So I, I do find I it pretty. You support interesting. Marco? How dare you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I find it, I just find what it about like, what about? Okay, so 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 I I get I can talk all day about gutturals and and shit like that. But what about people hating on the fact that uh, about your feet and how fast you are and calling you out on trying to be big? <laughs> now that's yeah. some sh- that's some shit you could talk about because I'm 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 yeah interested yeah, in yeah yeah i mean that shit's funny that's just funny because um it's real I funny mean, like, it's just funny to me because it's like it's like dude i've been in like all these bands and I, I think i think that if it's like i think that if i wasn't really doing it or if i was bad or something it's like i don't think i would be in all these bands <laughs> so it's <laughs> like yeah so it's just like super funny and it's like yeah i mean i'm just like bro i don't know just come to a show or something like what the fuck so but uh, yeah. <laughs> now you it's do just... have a really impressive resume, though, when yeah, you actually resume, look into yeah. how much stuff, how much <laughs> stuff you've been involved in. I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ, I'm scared of this dude now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. That's why. That's why. I mean, that's why it's just like, you know, who who cares if people are talking shit, man? They're not. Yeah. They're they're just like jealous or envious, like kind of like what Dom's saying. You know, it's like. There's just like random people in their basements, bro, you know, and like not doing anything. It was too, it was. That's exactly it. It was kids on the forums that were in the basements yeah, like, that were like, you know, that was the scene. Kids in their basements, death metal wasn't <laughs> getting, you know what I mean? Like early yeah. death metal wasn't getting any any big right. big to do. Yeah, right. It was so underground, like super, super underground. But I mean, so underground where it was cool to connect with a lot of the underground heads that that you would never right. really find unless you were in the, this brutal music, you know, some some of the Japanese heads, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, true. <laughs> in, Infernal right. Revulsion back in the day, they came here and, uh, you know, that was yeah. really, you know, that that's, that's something too, you know, to, mm. I don't take that lightly, is the, the friends, the new yeah. friends coming in, you know, to, 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 have the constant flow of new people to be friends with and this generational community that's growing bigger and bigger around the planet through music, through frequency, through everybody connecting at the, at the show, feeling it, having a good time, dancing hard, having, you know, just getting it out, uh, networking. It's all there, you know, building relationships of all of old next level shit. And that's that's strength in numbers right there. That's for sure. I I don't I think people really might underestimate how big the death metal community truly is around the planet. It might be one of the biggest things on the planet current day. Maybe the, in my opinion, it could be the biggest beyond just regular metal. I think underground brutal death metal has such a following that it's just it's everywhere i haven't gone anywhere yet that there isn't brutal brutal music going on it's just it's like wildfire all right and you know and yeah. basically because of you know all the um the tech you know has has changed our life and we can connect with people to make and create things faster quicker with with a broader range of talent and then say hey there's this new band you know Here's this new project. Here's this, uh, you know, this band that's international pu- pushing the envelope, you know. Um, and you just get all sorts of creativity going on. Let's talk about Slam Coke real quick. Here's <laughs> an international international project that uh, Marco and I are involved in, yeah. and uh, it it's involving anybody who wants to be creative in the heavy world that we reach out to, and if they want to be a part of it, they can. They could contribute whatever they want. Rap, beatdown, yeah. brutal death metal, speedcore, shredcore, deathcore, I don't even know core, whatever core, you know, yeah. whatever you want to do, you know, it's, it's, it's a mashup, and that's what's so unique about that, and that's international, what, that's got like, we're at like six countries or something like that now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, five or I know, six that's, like, that's all, that's all because of the, like what you're saying with the tech. That's why it's yeah. like back, back, you know, even in the early 2000s, it wasn't even really like that possible to do stuff like that. But now it's just so much easier to. Yeah, you want to go do yeah, things. Exactly. That's, like, I mean, that's basically like what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, 
you got your yeah. studio. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm gonna I'm building a, a a vocal booth to to do the same thing in my apartment. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, people people don't want to be hearing me screaming in this apartment. They'll be like, All right, the guy gotta go. Yeah. The guy upstairs is possessed. Yeah, the guy upstairs, upstairs on level four. It's got problems. <laughs> Awesome. So as more established musicians, I mean, you guys aren't new to this anymore. Like you guys have done a lot of big things in your career and you've been doing this a while. What piece of advice could either of you offer a band starting out now that you wish someone had told you when you were starting out? Marco, if you want to go first on that one. Uh, that's tough, man. Honestly, <laughs> I guess, I guess, uh, for me personally, the only thing that I can really think of, and this is, this is like hella random and stuff, but, uh, it's so weird. Like, so, so when I was growing up, you know, like you see MTV and shit like that back in the day, of course, you know, like I was watching MTV and stuff and you see all these bands playing live and, and, you know, it was like Limp Bizkit and Corn and stuff on TV. And you're just like, you're just like, damn, that is so fucking sick. You know, and you're like, these dudes are like rock stars. And then like, you know, a few years go by and I was in high school and then I, I went to see like Dying Fetus. I saw uh, like, it was like Nile and Dying Fetus in Origin and stuff like that. And I remember like after the show, you know, talking to, to the guys and, I, and just being like starstruck, you know, like I was like, holy shit, you know, like these are the dudes, you know, pl playing the, this shit, you know, it, it was just like so trippy. But then it was like a, it was like a, uh, it was like a harsh reality of uh talking to them and then seeing that they're touring you know in like a van and and i was like i was i was like where's your tour bus and they're like and they're like they're like what they were like bro this is like in the van they're like we just stay at hotels we drive in the van and and for for me back then I, that was like my mind was like blown i was like what the fuck <laughs> like i'm like I, you know because it's like to me these guys are like gods you know and you're just like right. holy fuck you're like you're like dude you know it's like you guys should be millionaires like what are you doing and and I was, you know, so for me, that was like definitely a big kind of like a shock to just playing music in general, really, you know, and and um, it's kind of like, I don't know, it, it's like, I don't know, it's it's basically just like if you're going to play music, just 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 make sure it's, you know, from the heart and, you know, you can't expect to become some sort of uh, millionaire playing the most extreme brutal shit there is. So. So, you know, basically, I guess my advice really would just to be to play whatever music you want and um, to have fun with it. That's like the most important part, really. You know, it's a good it's a good stress uh, reliever and a good, you know, it, it just makes you feel good anyways. So even if you're playing in front of like five people or five thousand people, it's like you, you should just play the same no matter what. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely do it for the passion. I agree. Yeah. But I mean, in my in my case, that's all we had is, you know, like some some kids, you know, we're doing it for the trend, right? Some kids are doing it for the passion. Mm -hmm. Some kids are doing it for the money. <clears throat> Everybody got their agenda for sure. I've seen it all. And uh sometimes kids are just out there doing their thing. And normally, in my opinion, it's the people who are just being themselves and doing their thing are the ones that are going to break through and surpass trends, set the, their own trend, you know. Um, but yeah, I would say, yeah, it's a great answer for sure. Um, advice would be, if you're younger now, is to stop drinking. Drinking is going to slow you the fuck down. I don't drink. I haven't drank my whole life. Uh, it just never agreed with me. And drinking will break your whole shit down. And you can't perform the way you want to perform later on in life as a whole. Your body just can't do it. Um, I, I would say that watching the other bands uh, do it as a job. You know, tour nonstop. It's their J O B. <laughs> they are um, maybe not doing that or conditioning properly. Uh, I have seen some band members like really struggling, and then seen some band members that are not struggling. And you could see who's taking care of themselves and who's not. And I would say that they might be thinking in in their head, "I wish somebody had told me, you know, maybe to take care of myself because." Uh, you know, 
what they have is a full-time job and um, it's very stressful on the body. It's 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 a mind, body, soul stress to, to be touring, you know, nonstop, to be putting food on the table. You have, these, some of these men have, you know, families to provide for. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I've seen it. I've seen some real stress. And I look back and I go, you know, waking, always doing this for, for kicks, you know, for fun. Uh, we didn't, ha we didn't have that stress. It's always been for the fun, for the creativity and for the passion and um, to have a good time and to push the limits and, and do all that. And it got us past the trends. It got us doing our own thing. And now, wouldn't you know, there's only 10 billion other waking the cadavers now because of that. So it's, it's proof in the pudding that you just do what you want to do, do it well take care of yourself so you could do it as long as you want, you know, instead of uh, um, crash and burn later. You know, there's a lot of musicians that I wish were still around if they just took care of themselves. You know, I think we're, we're losing long, you know, losing a lot of brothers and sisters lately. And I'd say uh, a lot of uh, really at young ages, you know, I'm 41, you know, as of this recording and I sure as hell don't feel like it. You know, I've been told I don't look like it. So I, I must say, you know, by taking care of yourself, you could definitely be uh, doing your passion. You know, like Marco said, you know, you want to be doing it passionately. You want to be taking care of yourself. Um, that's one thing I'll go into, too, when I do these vocal tutorials that are being requested is to, to really stress that is to really do these certain things if you really want to do your best performance, you know, and I'm sure Marco has a regimen of sorts that, you know, he gets into, I've seen um, Danny from Napalm Death when I was on tour with them, he would just be nonstop on the pad, just not, just nonstop on that thing. I felt bad for the pad, really, and uh, it just kept getting beat, you know, and he would just be just blasting nonstop, like blasting was like breathing, you know? So, but I, you know, I noticed that's everybody too. It could be nerves, <laughs> you know, get those nerves out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely, definitely, I would say, you know, take care of yourself if you want to continue doing your passion and uh, cut down on the fucking drinking. Shit's not going anywhere. Just chill. Smoke weed instead. And uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah. Oh. I'll smoke to that. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Alex. All right. Okay, so the first fan question is for Don. It's from uh, John McCauley. He asks, will there be more hate diplomacy? Yeah, I figured that would come up. Um, there probably will be, but not from me. Uh, uh, I have left the project to do other projects. I can't dedicate all the time to that. So um, the project is alive, but Dimas, the guitar player, is running that project. It's his his uh, lead. So um, yeah, there's the, answer, the short answer on that. But I appreciate okay. uh, appreciate all that support for for that project. It's uh, as a side note that that's why we uh, do things sometimes with with music. It it has a lot of power and uh, can hold a lot of uh, keys and messages. And the reason that band exists in for me is to spread a lot of uh, experience that I have had for other people to grip on. So the, the, we talk about a lot of things in there. Um, in my opinion, it, it is knowledge because it is my experiences and my research about things going on in life. Um, so that, that, that project, um, has a lot of, uh, personal things for me when, when I'm right. a part of it. it, it was, it was, um, out before I was in it. It was, um, a Puerto Rican bass band and then it came here and now it may evolve to something else. So cool. yeah, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Cool. All right. Uh, Anthony. 
I'm going to butcher the last name. I know I am. Calderon um, asks, what was it like working with John Hartman of Mortal Decay? He said he believes it was real life death. You guys worked together a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legendary band Mortal Decay. Um, John is a dear friend of mine, and he is a phenomenal human. He's an excellent guitar player, um, extremely funny. He is uh, full of ideas, full of riffs. I mean, you know, there, there's nothing better to go to somebody and know that you can um, have something to constantly bounce stuff off of. And he's really easy to do that with. So you're always getting a good bounce back to say, oh, yeah, cool, a cool idea. You know, he's full of ideas, um, constantly writing. So he's now in this band, uh, or has been in this band, in Bludgeonment which uh, was created by my guitar player, Mike Mayo, um, which he is no longer in this band, but um, it's very, very advanced, in my opinion, very advanced band. Um, the people who are in the band, the band members, um, Mark Green, Lee Cozens, um, John Hartman, uh, the, these, these, these musicians are... Uh, <laughs> heavy, heavy hitters and, and writers, they, they are, they are extreme. Um, and Ken, the vocalist is, is very extreme as well. Uh, so a lot of energy, te uh, in, intense band. So he's writing in that band. Uh, if you want to continue listening to, to him, uh, in his writing and yeah, he's just phenomenal. So yeah, he's killer. Awesome. All right. Uh, Marco, this question is for you. Jake Lloyd asked, what was one of the hardest techniques to learn that you apply to your drumming today? Ooh. <laughs> huh, one of the hardest techniques. Uh, that's tough. I mean, uh, hmm. well, that's tough. I, I don't, I don't, it's kind of funny. Like there's all these techniques and shit like that. The drummers are doing, they have all these names, you know, um, push pull and stuff like that and i don't even do any of those i don't really pay attention to stuff like that to be honest so uh that's a tough one um for me something that i'm always trying to improve on is actually my double bass playing um just because i'm trying to get it uh, even cleaner you know and and uh so really it'd just be just 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 you know perfecting the heel up double bass technique is is really whatever i'm at because, you know, I did like marching band and in high school and stuff like that. So, like, I feel like my hands were always like pretty good, but it was always just my feet that were like, you know, at times can be lagging and stuff. And I'm trying to get it totally dialed in still where it's just like like a machine. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. OK, and uh, this one is for Don. It says what or what or this is worded weird. OK, so just bear with me. What or who inspired you to use the mic bouncing technique you do to get those staccato gutturals? That was... okay, so, yeah, there's a, a band called um, 40 Below Summer who used to do this, who's a New Jersey based band back in early 2000s that I grew up listening to. And I enjoyed the uh, play with the microphone because. Uh, Gave variation. It gave more ear candy to listen to. Uh, it was just a fun effect. Uh, I don't always do it. I think I might do it on a few songs, or maybe I used to do it live or something like that. But I, I really actually don't even catch myself doing that anymore. But I know back in the day I've done it, and yeah, to go to go flourish again and push push your technique you know we're talking technique so yeah to push push the envelope on what you're doing on stage you may say well hey shit i did that and that that was a great result i'll do i'll do that again you know you don't know until you try right so definitely right. uh would say everybody try different things and see what your sound is by doing all sorts of things with the microphone i mean people would be complaining about the cupping of the microphone or this and that but it I never really used that as a technique. I didn't really, if, if anything, I wouldn't want to do it like that. And if I am holding it, it's 
really just the, the way I am performing. And that's really it. The way I have to perform is the way I am holding my body to perform while produce the sound, while run around on stage, while give a show, while, you know, this is a whole, this is a lot going on. So my body will do different things, not necessarily as a technique to say I'm cupping the microphone. I could do the same things with or without holding the microphone, one hand, two hands, it doesn't matter. So, you know, uh, I'm not utilizing a hand technique around the microphone to rely on my sound. Right. So there it is. Cool. All right. And this is the last fan question I got. Um, I'm allowing this one, even though it's kind of, well, not kind of dumb. It is dumb because this is the guy that introduced me to both of you guys. So kind of feel like I owe him this one. Uh, he, his name's Taylor Nelson. He wants to know if you guys have a favorite Care Bear. <laughs> don't, 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 don't ask. I mean, I'm just reading the question, man. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I, I'm gonna be honest. I I can't. I don't know a single Care Bear, bro. <laughs> That's I told him oh, that you don't care. He I told him that he called me and he even called me to make sure I was gonna ask this. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I don't think I don't think they fucking know any care bears. I mean, but I'll... I mean, I mean, this is it's actually pretty funny because I have I have kids and I want to I want to say I've even seen the show before, you know, briefly, but I don't remember any of that stuff, man. So back to the regular interview questions. Uh, so tell us about how you and Lord Marco got together to uh, tell us how you and Lord Marco got together. How did that start? Or Marco and Don, you can either one of you can go. <laughs> All right, so I'll re-ask the question now that we've uh, we've got this fixed. So okay, tell. Tell us about how you and uh, Lord Marco ended up getting together uh, in Waking the Cadaver. So I have, uh, I had to make a, a hard decision in life and somewhat of a business decision, as well as really first and foremost, wanting to create with Marco in life. That was my main thing. I knew Marco prior and I knew Marco was a fan and I'm a fan of Marco and we started um, our friendship, you know, through, through music. Um, and then we met, you know, we met in Europe, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like 2019. Yeah, 2019, we finally met and yeah. uh, you were visiting, were you, were you on tour? No, no. So that was actually when I, that was when I was visiting my now, my wife now, you know. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So you guys had your first date at my show in Europe. Literally, bro. Like literally. Yeah. That was, that was, that was what made us like official. You know, we were like, all right, we're together now. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, so there's, there's been some crazy inception. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely wanted Marco in the band, so I had replaced him with uh, Chris Kulak, who was really there for us and who was on our uh, Asia tour and um, really filled the gap when, when we really needed uh, somebody kick-ass to, to come be in the band. But then I really wanted to be with Marco. You know, I really wanted <clears throat> that inception to go down. And I really thought it would be great to combine our talents other than the Slam Code project. And I knew that this would be a great opportunity. So it was my my move. And it was something that I was hoping worked out because it was very long distance. And I know Marco's no slouch and he could get the job done. And this was a very different thing for even Marco to take on as well to just say, here. Here's waking a cadaver, and you know, kick some ass. Uh, <laughs> I, had, I I had no worries, but it's definitely different than what Marco's used to as well. And again, it's it's about everybody putting their flavor into it, 
making it their own. Everything has an evolution. And in the studio, things are evolving on the fly sometimes as well. Edits are going down. Um, so in my opinion, uh, uh, this, this connection was, uh, really meant to be, and it was a long time coming from, from, you know, the early days of, of us trying to get together, even on tours to drop off a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Been, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's been, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, was, I was going to say that. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say that's true. Cause yeah. I remember you, when you guys were here in Washington, literally your guys, basically your last show with that first, like with that lineup, I remember that I was like, shit, I got to get to the show to, to try, you know, just to get some merch and shit, bro. Yeah. So it's crazy. I mean, it's really like what Don's saying. I mean, I mean, me and Don have been talking to each other for, for like, you know, over 10 years now. So yeah. it was, it was definitely a long, a long thing, you know, coming. So <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It felt, totally. felt really natural too, you know, uh, just recently, you know, <sighs> Not too long ago, we had our first band practice together. <laughs> you know, yeah. so that was really weird too. So we 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 got together for this for the <laughs> we got together for the <laughs> video shoot, and I was really <laughs> hoping that we would jam, but the video <laughs> took so long. He just flew yeah. in. We pretended that we were all playing. Yeah, then, right. <laughs> <laughs> we never played. So we have a oh my have god, a, that's awesome. Yeah. We got a whole album. We have a whole album. It's yeah. been out. We have, <laughs> we have this, we have these multiple music videos, and the band has never ever jammed once together in real time. It is all studio. It is all nonsense yeah. at that point. And I'm like, we got a show coming up. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go headline this 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 fest, and uh, <laughs> we have no band practice. We have one band practice, and uh, uh, yo. Much thanks to uh, our good friends in Nine Dead. Uh, John was able to uh, lend us their, their spot, which is great. And they've been a huge help for us, to be honest with you. And, yeah. Yeah, they really have. And uh, they're, they're, they're terrific guys and, and got, got great talent. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was really great for them to help us out and get the connection smooth you know there's there's a lot that goes on with that drum set you know planning that getting that time it takes there um the other two band members as well to get them going um it's a lot of time everybody's got family kids you know the time is so rare to get together it's <clears throat> it was it was no joke so it was nice that that nine dead let us uh you know use their spot so we were just able to go there crush it with all the equipment, you know, mm -hmm. making it really seamless for us to just use as much time as we can, which was very limited to jam as, as the, the set as much as possible and to just start memorizing this set. You know, we were doing our, our due diligence earlier and jamming when we could and conditioning and practicing, of course, mm -hmm. but it's totally different when you're doing it together. You know, there's, you may think you may, you know, it's all going to flow right with this person and it may not, it could be, it's a big gamble. So when we all got together, it was beautiful. <laughs> right. So you and got was, one, you, it was all recorded, right? It's all, it's now, we're now posting it online right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. time, so people are going Please. gaga about, about our first time jam. That's, that sounds great. And, uh, even if there are errors, you know, they're, they're beautiful errors and it's part of history and jamming for the first time together. So it's really, really cool in my opinion. And it's very humble and it looks very 2006 basement the way I used to jam. So it's very, very nostalgic yeah. to bring it all back to just like a humble basement jam and where it sounds really big too, you know? Um, right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot, a lot to come from, from this, this combo for sure. Hell yeah. So there is almost an eight year gap between when you realize uh, when you released Real Life Death and Authority through Intimidation. And I know you said you had some band member uh, lineup or some band lineup changes over the years. Um, were there any challenges that you faced when you were getting back into the studio to record Authority through Intimidation that maybe you didn't expect? 
have any challenges yeah um well i i did have a challenge but it was more on a physical challenge of having come out of a back surgery that many people don't know that i had oh and yeah i had a l4 l5 uh discectomy i know that sounds pretty Ooh. brutal discectomy. that sounds it sounds like it should be a band name yeah, it should be. So, you know, discectomy is playing. Discectomy is playing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was definitely a, a wild time with that. So I was coming out of recovery with that going on. And that was a bit challenging for me to go and stand for early mornings. Because we were doing it early morning. Um, I never recorded early morning before. Maybe I have. I'm not sure. I think I did for Real Life Death with Joe Sincata in Full Force Studios in Long Island back in the day. That's uh, maybe we did some early shit, but this was, it's been, been a long time since then. So, yeah, it was early morning, coffeeed up, but I was definitely, uh, was definitely sensitive. You know, I'm, I'm good now, but I was really like fresh out of that surgery. So, and I had, I was, Again, that was under another time constraint. And that's something I hope that I don't have this time around. There's been for some weird reason, just like every single time I record a waking album, there's some wild time constraint. And I don't have as much time as I want to do what I want to do with the vocals or even go and edit or have like another round to, to do things. There's like not enough time for some reason. Everybody's got all the time. Where's my time? Marco took all the time. As far as like when you were writing Authority Through Intimidation, um, I know you said Marco wasn't really in mind during that time frame. Was this album like a long time in the works or did it move kind of quickly and then you brought Marco in? Uh, this album was a long time coming from Mike Mayo's mind. This is his brain child, his brain baby. It is his creation. It's his production. It's his lyrics. It's it's everything. It's the way he wanted the drums. It's he wrote everything, literally. So Wow. Yeah, really he he's brilliant. He really is. I'm really blessed to have this man in my life. He's 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 the shit. He's a terrific friend and uh he's a phenomenal writer and to 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 jam and uh to to watch him do his thing is is super impressive and i i've, I've told him this I, I, and and i feel like he is always pushing himself as well so with this album it was a while because he had a while but also we had a, a deal on the table that we had a, a time to meet you know so there was a deadline so yeah yeah i mean i don't know what else to say he's uh <laughs> him saying here's the whole thing uh i just come in and do what i want you to do say it how i want you to say it do your gutturals where i want your gutturals and we're good and it's the first time i ever <clears throat> had done anything like that before I've always been super involved, super band practices, old school, you know, this was more like come in, you know, very, very hired gun kind of concept. Um, very, I mean, it was cool though. It was like somebody who knew what I was capable of inside and out too. So really knew me and, and knew what the waking sound is obviously. And what he had going on in his head <laughs> is something he was like, okay, I, I want this. I want you to say these words like this. This is what we're gonna do. I said no problem, and it turned out to be really, really great. And so there's a lot of trust there, and um, I was able to do, you know, obvious, obviously my creative flows as well, um, but but not a whole lot. It was very, you know, like I said, it was. This is how I have it in my head. We're not gonna change it now because this is the way it's gonna go down in the studio. So, but it was also my first time, you know, hearing it like that. So it was like a cold, coming in cold kind of thing. I, 
for for like 90 percent of it i only had um one song to listen to which was uh arbiter of punishment for like all of 2020 when everybody was in lockdown and that's all i really had and i had that that song's like almost what five minutes or something so yeah. i had that like playing and playing and playing and i had him doing his vocals to it which is a totally different world because mayo can do some old school style death metal vocals that sound really sick but it's definitely not the way i do it so the breathing patterns are different the technique is different and then for me to think that's how i'm going to do it is is wild without actually doing it so the time i got to do it was the studio and what you heard is what you heard recorded so um I don't know. I won't be doing it like that this time around. There'll be more prep. There'll be more. No more. No more uh, deadlines. This this right. next out. I'm gonna make sure of it. There's just there's no need for that. They're all fictitious to make some fictitious deadline. The fucking CD will come out when it comes out. When we're good and ready. <laughs> when it sounds the way it can sound to be, all it can be. You know. Uh, I don't think like there needs to be all this pressure. Um, we're, we're, we're playing shows now, so we're going to be out and about, we're going to be connecting. Uh, we're going to be a lot more active on social media. You know, we're going to be doing interviews and shit like this, you know? So this, this, this whole waking the cadaver right now is going to be a lot more active and fluid and up in your face kind of thing in my opinion at least more than we are now <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> um of course i was like super excited to be a part of waking the cadaver so it was it was awesome and like you know it's it's basically like i was already prepared to do that you know to do it remote basically and so yeah, so it's like uh, all I need, all I need is the guitar, you know, and basically, like, basically, like for me to, to do it, it's like I need the guitar track, you know, and then a click track, which is like a metronome, you know, going yeah. with the guitar, and then like it, you know, this varies from from project to project, but like with waking, like yeah, Mike Mayo already had like basically programmed drums going to the, you know, to the songs, and and yeah, he he wanted me to basically uh, play it. I mean, at least like the drum beats, I you know, identical to what he thought of. Um, and I think I literally changed like a couple things, but actually, but basically all I changed was I made the blast beats faster, I think. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Just so that, help yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember, I mean, I remember, I remember like I tried to change like, well, I forget what, it was like some, some random little part. And, and, and it was just like crazy because, because usually, you know, guitar players or whatever, they're just like, yeah, whatever, like do your thing. But I remember, man, my, Mike was like, he's like, no, nah, wait, he's like, can you just play it like the actual thing, like basically what he had programmed? And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, but it's all good because, I mean, it sounds fucking sick. So it was just like, you know, I, I, I basically, like for me, I tend to try to make it more complicated and like technical, you know? And so I was like, just kind of like, you know, trying to make it way more extreme than it really needed to be. And so like yeah <laughs> so yeah that's why that's why i like i already had a bunch of experience recording you know remotely and and all that so so for me right. it was like you know it was like no big deal it was like pretty easy easy to do and and yeah even like what don said it was like i think they basically sent me the songs and then you know i i don't really remember how long it took but like for me to do this like like even, actually like even yesterday i recorded 10 songs yesterday for some dude in texas and you know, it takes like a few hours and it's like, boom, there's 10 songs like done. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. All right. So are you able to share with us uh, if Waking has any material coming out in the near future? No, uh, in the near, near future. Not very near, but it is in progress. That's for mm -hmm. damn sure. We have. Uh, we have things to listen to now out of Mike Mayo's brain. So that's great. If so, we're in process there. And it's heavy as shit. And 
I'm happy to yeah. hear that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that. And, and yeah, I, I, cool. I, we we have yet to hear the rest of the brain, so we're gonna we're yeah. gonna wait. We're gonna wait, and and I only can say right now from what we got going on, you know, with with his ideas, which are are really you know fine tuned for Marco at this point. Uh, it's gonna be sick as fuck. I'm stoked. Hell yeah. Now, uh, I mean, I know he's he's not here, but like, man, Mike is one of my favorite, like, extreme metal guitar players. Just for that man's riff work alone, like, he has some of the just crunchiest brushing riff work that I've listened to, especially like on the on the last album, Authority Through Intimidation. Like, the just the riff work, I can I don't get bored with it. Yeah. Like, he's just a goddamn machine with the stuff. So. Yeah. I agree. It's constant um, sick part after sick part after sick part where you you can't can't get enough of it. There's no boring yep. part, in my opinion. I feel like uh, when you know your craft and your sound and your demographic and you know your fan base and what they would like to hear from your skill set, your arsenal, and the arsenal is pretty pretty, you know. Arnold Schwarzenegger at this point. It's no joke. You know, it's it's basically Predator in the woods, <laughs> mowing the woods down, you know. The, the best scene in Predator. Yeah. That that's what it sounds like, you know. And when 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 you could just kind of pick out of this insane arsenal on what you want to do, you can really start to mold the band into this product that will deliver like this fucking machine. You know that is well oiled. That 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 sounds crispy and and direct and dialed in and still pushing the envelope, but not going so far out that's like you're gonna lose people. You know, some people do that too. Or they go a little bit too out of the realm, and sometimes you can. There's a little bit of cost to that, but. Waking has its own little world that it's in, and that's what it is so if i wanted to go say hey mike go write something uh -huh. like this you know it may it may not even work or fly or it could derail the sound of the band you know you can't get too too different you know it, it has to stay in this in this vein that we're in it's it's really dialed in and i think it's going to get more extreme with marco now obviously and everybody is constantly leveling up so I feel like the next next product that we put out is going to be even more insane. And I'm, I'm really excited and I'm really looking forward to it for sure. I am too, man. I'm always excited for New Waking the Cadaver, but it just seems like the band gets stronger every year. Like every release, just I love all your stuff like from beginning to now, but every release just gets better. And I, I, I fucking love it, man. Um, so I guess my last question is, um, do you guys have any, I know you have announced one show, I'll let you talk about that, of course, but do you have any like shows or tours planned in, uh, the, I know maybe not the near future, but the distant future? We're trying right now, uh, to plan as much as we can. There's hope for, uh, some European dates. Uh, there's hope for some uh small stints of tours possibly uh in california um but these are just things that are hypothetical that we're trying to toss around that are uh, hard to plan we have um mike mayo is a nurse so his schedule is extremely hard to get a grip on currently with the current schedule so we're kind of working around everybody's personal life as much as possible um, Marco's, you know, has children. It's a very busy schedule. Uh, uh, everybody's, you know, married. You know, I'm, I'm living this uh, bachelor lifestyle, <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I have all the flexibility in the world, which is great for the band. Uh, and I work, you know, remotely, so I can, uh, I can do a lot of things and be on tour and work and and kind of do this, you know double life uh to 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 make ends meet but 
you know, it's it's hard right now with everybody's schedule to to get things, and you have to do so much planning ahead of time, and we're falling short a little bit right now. But um, there are things in the works. We we uh, we have something in February of 2024 coming up, and we have uh, our next show, our first show uh, in New Jersey. November 18th. Yeah. It's been a while since you played in Jersey, hasn't it? Over like 13 years, I think, or 10 years, 10 plus years, whatever it is. I think 13 years or something. I think, I think it was a dying fetus tour. And that was a long time ago, 20, 2010 or 2013. Wow. It it's, it's, it, yeah, it's been a minute. So, um, I mean, we played the a uh, sold out show for for Gutter Christ uh, in um, twenty eighteen when we did our comeback show. <clears throat> that, that, that was really great, and now we're going to do Gutter Christ show again in Jersey show, and it's going to be Central Jersey with. Uh, uh, I don't know if we could say the lineup yet, but uh, we'll just I'll wait for the flyer for that, and we'll, we'll flyer that. Uh, <clears throat> But yeah, um, it's, it's a killer lineup, and uh, everybody can look forward to uh, checking Gutter Christ Productions out and waiting on that good old news. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be really sick. It's going to be Central Jersey, some really like on the beach. <laughs> so it's really cool that it's like right around my hometown area. Uh, we're from originally the band originates in Shore Points, New Jersey. So this is right basically at Shore Points. Uh, so that's pretty nostalgic that it's there, to be honest. This place called Salties in uh, Belmar, New Jersey, Lake Como area. And this is basically where the band has originated from in this area Belmar, Howell, um, Manasquan, Wall Township. Brick, uh, Oakhurst, Freehold, like the, this area, uh, Asbury Park area, very, very central Jersey Shore area. Uh, these bandmates were originated from. Uh, and as the band lineup changed, it was a couple of people from South Jersey, North Jersey, Central Jersey, so it kind of flowed around. Um, but yeah, it was uh, quite the evolution. I didn't really have anything else unless there was something that I missed that you guys wanted to talk about. Anything else you got going on? I think. Mm, no, not really, no. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm really excited about the show coming up in November. And um, yeah, like Don said, it's like, you know, the the older we're getting, it's like, little bit harder to to plan everything you know to make it work but i think i think wagon the cadaver though for sure has you know a, a big enough fan base where it's like we can still you know be seen and playing shows you know so i'm definitely excited to see what what the future holds you know for us so yeah yeah i'm awesome. excited i'm excited i think uh it'll be really healthy for us to to play as many shows as we can to be honest with you since it feels very very new you know it feels like a brand new band at this point uh which is a really cool thing to feel uh at this point in the game with your band you know it's not old things are very fresh and new um so there's a lot of life and energy there's a lot of um looking forward to the next song mike's gonna put out you know with everybody everybody on it so and, and everybody gets to contribute too it's not like it's just mike's world or something it's uh just you know he's the main main core of the sound and and the aesthetic and the product and and knows and is is the writer so um but you know everybody is uh, uh for sure a contributor and uh i'm stoked that marco can contribute and uh, Michael Thomas, our bass player, uh, he's he's killer and 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 always always on point and fucking contributing constantly to this band and dedicated. Uh, 
has been on all the tours with 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 me has uh, been through hell uh with with uh some of the uh bad experiences that uh waking had to go through so uh the dedication with this lineup right now is is very special to me um it is an all-star lineup uh, it's very seasoned veteran uh, musicians, and everybody's at the top of their game. So I really look forward to this next album more than anything in life right now, and and just the general future of the band. And the band's not going to go anywhere, <clears throat> even if we can't play as much as we'd like to or plan to for whatever reasons outside our control. That's not going to uh put a damper on anything that we have planned or or want to do or or want to create so we have a lot of other things that we're working on as well side projects constantly going on side hustles side business you know uh guest vocals lessons there's there's all sorts of things going on in our world non-stop that are constantly keeping us involved with the community and busy so we are constantly giving back and contributing to, which really feels good. We're not just some people are sitting back and, you know, not, not really giving back to the community in that way. I feel like we are two, two, two men that are contributing tremendously to the scene constantly in, in many different ways. And, and so, are, so are many others, you know, there's a lot of people who are gun ho which makes it feel really great to be a part of. And I probably wouldn't be a part of it if I wasn't feeling that. Uh, right. I, I, many other things to do with my time and many other creative ventures to be doing as well. And I am blessed that waking is what it is and that it's flourishing. And that also as a business move, it's, uh, it's huge. It's, it's a, it's a monster right now and it's, it's just going to get bigger. So, you know, this is very encouraging and I really look forward to all the things we have planned with this band. I have a lot of things in, in the background going on. Um, a lot of creative ventures, uh, a lot of business ventures, uh, working with a lot of different people, doing different things, trying to move to Mercury as much as I can, you know, different areas of being creative. So some of it involves uh, solo projects. Um, I have a side project going on, my friend Anthony, I, I won't disclose the name, but uh, once that comes out, that's going to be really cool. That's Anthony Kosu, um, ex dehumanized from New York, uh, killer, killer fucking musician, killer, killer human, killer friend. Um, so look forward to that. That's going to be like a next level hate diplomacy esque kind of project where I'm talking real talk about some next level shit again. And uh, it's more like old school style, brutal death metal feeling. Right. So, pretty sick. No gutturals type shit, pushing the vocals in a different direction, working with uh, uh, special people to lift, lift up, you know, where them and their their talents uh i won't disclose who they are i have other projects going on right now i can't even i can't even talk about right now <laughs> but it's so it's so big it's hysterical <laughs> that's the cool thing uh really big name really really big names and i couldn't believe the offer when it was given to me uh literally you know given given like you know please and i was like very humbled by this offer so that's something right. that's going on uh that nobody in nobody has a fucking clue about so when that hits that's gonna that'll shake things up in our scene for sure so you just be on the lookout for that <laughs> oh, hell yeah yeah i got a lot of things going on trust me it's it's time you know i i to wrap it up you know i, I i've been around not not forever you know but i've been around long enough to um to understand uh, uh what i want to do with with the vocals and where i want to take it and what i want to be a part of and 
you know, it's very encouraging. So I just want to thank everybody, you know, for supporting Waking the Cadaver and supporting us in our journey. And everybody who's listening to this, thank you very much. And you're, you're, you're amazing. And really look forward to, you know, what you have to think about and say about our new material and Marco in his insane, <laughs> insane talents on top of insane gutturals and insane riffs oh. and thumpy crunks. It's gonna be, it's gonna yeah. be nuts. I'm telling you, this this next album is gonna be like, ouch. Oh man, I'm excited for it. Yeah, well, I'm, I appreciate you guys. I really do. I appreciate, I appreciate both of you taking the time to come talk with me, answer all my questions, and let me ask you about you know shit that happened you know 18 years ago or whatever. But, <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, on that note and. Don, one more for the road. One more for the road. Skinny penis out. Peace, baby.